Hello everyone and welcome back to a fresh new episode of I Talk to Notebooks. I am your host Sarah and today we are going to be doing a journal with me in the traditional fashion except oh look something seems to be different. Are we living in an alternate timeline? Has Thanos snapped the time stone? Why am I moving so slowly? It is because I am not speeding up this video because it is actually a very short video. And the reason why is because I am finishing up my current journal, number 22. Now, this is a bit of an artificially sped up uh, conclusion to this journal. And it's not because I didn't like it, it was because I made an executive decision to do something in my journal that I'm not sure if it's a good move or not. I have very mixed feelings about it. Uh, there's a couple different topics I want to cover in this video. I'm feeling in a very discussion-ish mood. I've had a lot of thoughts all week, none of which are big enough for a topics and journaling video, but I do want to hear people's thoughts about these topics. So the first one is this executive decision I made. This is a little more lighthearted. So there is a challenge going around now called the uh, August Mixed Media Challenge, and it's by the Clever Crafter, or, or sorry, I think her username is just Clever Crafter. Her name is Angie, and she posted this challenge for August, 31 days in August, 31 days of mixed media challenges. I've never done a challenge before, guys, but when the minute I saw this one, I saw it on Paper Lover 123's Instagram, the second I saw it, I knew I had to do it. It looked too exciting to pass up. So I decided to section off a section in my current journal to do it. So 31 pages. I decided not to do spreads. I'm going to make other videos about this in the future. Um, but in conclusion, it took about 15 spreads out of my current journal, which was already kind of nearing its end. And now I've got uh, really just like four spreads left at the back to complete. And then it's going to be into journal number 23. Now, why do I have mixed feelings about this? Well. I have mixed feelings because I'm going to have a little bit of August plus the entire August challenge in this journal 22, whereas I'm going to have most of my August journaling done in the next journal. And I do anticipate probably finishing that journal, if not by the end of August, probably close to August because um, August is going to be, first of all, I'm going to move into a markings by C.R. Gibson. I always do that once I stray away. Every other journal is a markings by C.R. Gibson. And, um, I do that because I like that journal the best and I don't like to leave it for too long. Um, but I think August is going to also be, and, and those marking journals, I tend to finish them up very, very quickly. I fill them quite quickly uh, because I just love writing in them. They're rather small and I just tend to just not be able to stop writing in those journals. Kind of like when you read a good book, you can't put it down. Sierra Gibson is like writing a good book because I just love those journals so much. So that combined with the fact that I think August is going to be a pretty, I'm going to have a lot to write about in August. Okay. It's going to be a big month for journaling. I can just tell. So I kind of felt like maybe I should have had the challenge in there just to tie everything together. I could have started the journal with a challenge. I don't know. And then part of August is going to be in this journal. Would that bother you guys? Would you feel bothered that the month is like cut off like that? Normally I don't care. It's just all very contiguous, but, um, contiguous, continuous contiguous United States. I think I could have used the word contiguous. I don't know if I used it right or not. I'm not looking it up right now, but I do think it would have been um, possible for me to uh, just do August in one shot. And now it's like, oh, I'm saying goodbye to that. Conversely, this journal is huge and will give me lots of spaces for the space for this mixed media challenge, which I like that. And markings by Sarah Gibson probably wouldn't. Again, also markings by Sarah Gibson has the um, book closure, which would make it probably a little bit difficult to bulk it up with this mixed media challenge. I do bulk up my markings journals, but um, the amount of bulk that's going to get added with this mixed media challenge, I think, I think that's what puts me over the edge that I made the right choice. But you guys let me know if that would bother you or not. Normally, I really try not to get bothered by things because then it just becomes an endless spiral of like bothering and uh, like compulsively going back and doing things differently and regretting everything. But so usually I just very much go with the flow, but today I'm just like, oh, was this the right move? Was this the right move? I don't know. So let me know what you think. But I'm really excited about the challenge. Um, and that brings us into the next section, which is that um, for the rest of August, I'm going to be doing journal with me's uh, every week, or I intend to. I don't know what's actually going to happen. None of us know the future, and you guys know I can flake sometimes. But um, I'm going to attempt to do journal with me's of 
this challenge exclusively. So I'm just gonna be showing how what I make and talking about how I made it. And yeah, it's really exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, the standard journaling type stuff is not going to be featured anymore for a while, uh, at least for August. So that is what is on the way. Now let us move on to the next topic, which is a brief topic. This is inspired by something that Jess Tun said the other day, or in one of her videos. I don't even know if this was a recent video. It might've just been on my homepage. I, Anyways, she was talking about, she was doing a flip through and she was talking about how when she is feeling really depressed, that's when she's the most creative. And that really struck me because I had actually planned in one of my future flip throughs to mention this, um, that it seems like, and I probably will mention it again because I do tend to repeat myself, but I, I noticed this as well. Like when I was the most miserable, that's when I had the best journal entries, the most visually appealing pages, the most clever writing. I used to write like poetry that I personally, um, definitely gonna toot my own horn here. I think it was pretty good poetry to be honest. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to share it, but I think it was objectively like quite clever, quite well written. Um, and I don't really write poetry right now cause I'm so happy. Like what would I write poetry about? Happy things? And even like, I do have happy poems in that journal, but it's because the joy that I found during that time was almost more treasured because I didn't have a lot of joy during that time of my life. Whereas now it's like, I'm, my life is so joyful. It's like, how am I gonna write all these joyful poems when I just feel happy all the time and take it for granted? So I was wondering if anybody else has had that experience. Um, I hear a lot of times that like artistic geniuses are were always like very miserable. So I guess it makes sense if like a lot of artists were very, very mentally ill and really miserable, um, they would have created really great things. It would make sense what Jess was talking about that that's been our experience as journal keepers as well. So I'm wondering if that's been your experience. I know a lot of people in the community do struggle with mental health issues. They have had difficult parts of their lives. And just to clarify, like my life has been amazing. Like I have never been diagnosed with anything. I don't wanna like come over here and make light of anybody's struggles. But I have noticed that when I was the least happy and exhibiting the most symptoms of mental illness that I haven't been diagnosed with, but I have been to therapy to get coping mechanisms for them and the therapist did say that these were symptoms of mental illnesses, although they did not diagnose me with them. Um, thankfully, I'm, I'm grateful for that because your life can get hard when you get diagnosed. Um, that's when I made the best work of any kind. I used to write, you know, when I was, you know, more anxious, more stressed, I used to write music that I really liked. I don't really do that anymore. When I'm like really down, I wrote better poetry and, and better journal entries and made more creative. I mean, I'm kind of like, pretty standard with how I decorate now. Um, I haven't felt super creative lately and I was feeling sad about that until Jess pointed that out and I was thinking about it and I realized, yeah, I don't know if I would trade feeling like that crappy to be better and more creative, you know? And that's not to say I'm not creative now. I love creating stuff. I can't not create. As pretentious as it sounds, I just, it's literally something I can't, I have to be making something almost every day. Even if it's just imitating somebody else's whatever. I, I have to be making something or else I just go crazy. So um, I am so creative, it's just I don't feel like my work is as impressive or as um, passionate as it used to be. And I'm wondering if anybody else has, has felt that dichotomy and what you think about it. Um, I guess it's one bright side of feeling bad, but I don't know with how bad some people can feel. I'm not sure if it's really uh, adequate to call that, really appropriate to call that like a bright side. I think it could still be maybe not worth it at all for some of the things that people go through. Man, that was a bit of a ramble there at the end. Um, third topic, um, did I forget what it was? Oh yeah, this is gonna seem really unrelated, but I think it's important. So for those of you who are terminally online, you may be aware of the current drama on YouTube surrounding Gabby Hanna, who is a creator who has done some really, really, really terrible things and said some really, really, really terrible things. And she is pretty much really kind of a terrible person um, as far as anyone can tell and just continues to double down on her terribleness. And there's lots of videos you can watch online if you don't know what this is about or who it is. I'll just write her name in the description box and you can look, just type that into the YouTube search bar to see, you know, recaps of what she's been up to and why everyone's so upset with her. But something that I've noticed um, was that a couple different things, so two parts to this. Um, first of all, even though she is objectively terrible and does terrible things, 
in a lot of the videos, although I don't disagree with anything, I mean, I don't agree with the things she's done and I can definitely see why she's wrong, I found myself inexplicably and irrationally sympathizing with her for some reason. And I realized that the reason is because I identify with her a lot. We seem to have, in a lot of ways, similar personalities. And that was a blow, let me tell you, because when I realized that, I was like, oh dear. That's not somebody you want to see yourself in. But to be honest, I do. And, you know, a big part of that reason is what I was just saying. is She's a very, very, um, she's somebody who creates all the time. She never stops creating. She's always producing something. She's into all kinds of different stuff. And that's one part of it, and that's a positive thing, I think. Um, a little more negative side of that is she can get very navel-gazy about her own creative process. Does that sound like anyone you know? Yeah, but that's like my whole channel, so that's not going away. Sorry. Um, and then the third part of her relatability is that she's extremely combative with other people online. And I'm like, oh, who does that sound like? Somebody who can get into online arguments all the time. Somebody who tends to like argue a lot. Like, oh wait, that's me. Now again, she's done a lot of reprehensible things, like specific behaviors with other people. Um, I do not agree with that at all, and I don't see myself in her. There's, you know, she's kind of been, um, she's been supporting a, minimizing a sexual assault of somebody who used to be a dear friend of hers, and that doesn't fly. I would never do that, and I'm saying that emphatically. Um, no. Absolutely not. Not even once. I take that stuff extremely seriously, and, uh, yeah, not gonna happen. And um, she also was extremely rude and threw around all kinds of slurs to people uh, in person. And again, that's not something that I do. It's not to say that I always have perfect language or perfect politeness, but I do not have that level of just screaming at people in public. Like, no, I don't do that. So I want to make sure that nobody's like, this person thinks Gabby Hanna is awesome and behaves exactly like her. Like, no, do not take that out of this video. The reason, I've just been watching a lot of the drama, I don't normally know anything about her, I've never followed her, but the drama I find, you know, very interesting, so I've been watching that, and those were some thoughts that I had. And I realized that, uh, well, I had a moment a lot like Stanley from The Office. The doctor said, if I can't find a new way to relate more positively to my surroundings, I'm going to die. And that's when I realized that I need to be using journaling as a tool to actually improve myself. And I do do that in a lot of ways, but um, I just realized I could be doing more of it with my journal. So I've really been trying to relate uh, positively to things in my journal and to try to frame things more positively. Now, what that does not mean is it does not mean faking my way with a big, big smile in my journal, because I would just stop journaling if I had to do that. The truth is I am a negative person. That seems to be part of my personality and it's not going away anytime soon. But what I can do is after I vent my feelings, instead of continuing to reiterate them and then leaving my entry, which is what I you know, have done in the past, trying to find a positive spin or to keep things in mind that I've learned as techniques from therapy can actually reframe the event in my mind and help me to leave with a more positive impression. Now, what I, again, what I don't mean doing is detaching from reality and delusionally saying something good is going to happen when logically it probably isn't. But I have been known to sometimes go the other way and expect negative things when actually they are not likely to happen. So trying to find that balance and trying to, you know, to do that is really helpful. Another good thing is to, when it comes to writing about other people and interactions with other people, if there's like a frustration or like, and you know, I'm not talking about specific people, this could even be groups of people or a general societal attitude. It could be easier, it could be more positive to, you know, write about the behavior or behaviors that are bothering me but then, you know, explain why that person might be doing that that could not be malicious. It could just be stupid or it could just be, be a habit or something like that. You know, trying to realize that there's a lot of areas I'm struggling in. So, and I will say I have done this with a considerable amount of success so far. And it's been extremely helpful. And I've noticed that my interactions with other people have been significantly more positive as a result. So I really think that this has been a good a good learning experience for me and honestly as silly as it sounds this gabby Hanna drama has definitely kind of been the catalyst for that so i do have to be grateful for that process because i do feel my life has been improved i hope this is something i can stick with because it does feel so much better to have a little bit more positivity in my life and to be able to relate more positively to the world around me um 
And finally, with Gabby Hanna, there was another component to the drama, which is that she has recently released uh, what she calls her series, which is basically a bunch of videos in which she doubles down on everything she's done and calls out other people who have tried to call her out and just gets really defensive and argues against all of them. And um, this series has been widely criticized. And one aspect of it that has been criticized, besides the obvious trying to defend the indefensible on her part, is also that she keeps talking about the series as a cathartic therapeutic experience for her to heal. And what people have been calling out, and rightfully so, is that you do not heal all over other people. You do not put your healing catharsis out on the internet and use other people to process your problems. She's dumping this on her fans, many of whom are, you know, young girls, un you know, underage people, you know, young people, and it's not their job to watch her dump her feelings out everywhere. That is inappropriate. And, you know, a lot of people are saying she needs to process this with a therapist on her own. And I totally agree. And, you know, I really thought that this was a great example of why the journaling process is so important and why I really do think more people should be journaling in general is because if you don't, you end up doing stuff like this. And listen, we can all point fingers at Gabby Hanna all day long. It's super fun and entertaining. But I can also point a huge finger at myself because I had what I like to call a journaling hiatus where I didn't journal for like five years. And um, that was when I was the hottest of the hot messes. I've never been such a hot mess as then. And believe me, I've been a hot mess while journaling all the time. But this, I had no emotional regulation because I was using other people to listen to and process all of my feelings, which is really, really unfair for other people. Um, you know, they don't sign up. They aren't getting paid, uh, you know, a rate the way that a therapist would be. So it's not their job to listen to you dump your emotions. Yes, friends should share things and should be, you know, empathetic to each other and listen to each other's problems, but there's a limit to that. And it is really being a bad friend to expect other people to behave as your therapist. I should have been handling that stuff on my own. I should have been using my journal to process that. And I found again that i gained a lot of more agency over my life once i started journaling because another thing that happens is that you yourself become dependent on other people because if you have someone in your life who isn't good for you but they at least listen to your problems and provide kind of an emotional support to you then you're going to feel dependent on them because if you don't have them what do you have you have no outlet and it's like people are not outlets you know you're going to tolerate some terrible behavior from people if you feel that desperate to have them in your lives I was maintaining relationships with people that were not good for me because I didn't have a healthy way of processing my emotions on my own. I wasn't in therapy, I didn't journal, and so I felt like I would be completely isolated and left to completely handle my own issues if I didn't have them in my life. And some of those people kind of saw that and preyed upon that and kind of realized that I needed them more than they needed me and that is not a good position to be in. Trust me, you do not want to be in that position. So it's both sides. It's unfair to the other people to burden them with that and it also puts you in a really vulnerable position that could leave you open to bad actors if they feel like they see that emotional vulnerability, that inability to process your emotions yourself, that inability to stand on your own and deal with your own crap and then they can kind of swoop in and play savior for a while and then you know, manipulate you with that kind of power that they have over you. Not to say that everybody would. A lot of people are really, really kind, but I'm just saying that's a negative side effect that I think a lot of people talk about the former, which is, you know, not burdening other people with your problems, which is completely, really important. You shouldn't do that. It's really wrong. But also, uh, no, I don't hear a lot of people talking about how vulnerable that can make you when you are completely dependent on other people for emotional sufficiency. You need to be able to do that on your own, whether that's with a therapist or if that's not something you can do right now, at least getting the venting part into a journal instead of onto somebody else is good. Because, oh, another thing that can make you vulnerable is oversharing, which was something I used to do a lot more than I do now because I wasn't journaling, I had nobody to talk to about it, and so I would just tell people things, and then they would have all this information about me that was, they shouldn't have had it, it you know? They can later use it against me, they can throw it in my face. Like, that's completely inappropriate. And again, you don't want to burden them with that. So I totally um, recommend journaling as a, as a way to avoid all of those negative outcomes. And I think that we learned this from the Gabby Hanna incident. I think that that really has demonstrated a lot of things to do with journaling, which is funny because it really doesn't have anything technically to do with journaling, but that's all I could think about while I was watching all this drama unfold. So anyway, well, my cat is crying, so I guess I'm gonna go. Goodbye.
i'm going to die.